Well, hey guys, Shanna Kramer here with Creatively Uncorked, and today we are going to paint this lovely winter scene. It's called, guess what? Winter Sunset. <laughs> I'm great at naming things, aren't I? I know it. I know it. Okay. I think I have my stuff together here. All right, so now here is the reference photo. And as I've been doing kind of a lot of recently, this is yet another AI image. Maybe I should zoom in so you can see it. Can you see it? Anyway, so what I like about this is mostly the color. Really, it's it's all about the color for me on this one. Um, but I like how the light is coming through the trees, how we're just getting this nice little, you know, glow of sunshine on the snow. Um, so we're going to make ours a little bit more abstract than this. So I'll just take out some colors here. So now with this, I want to start out with a really nice warm background. And this is going to be acrylic paint today. And my background, I want that to be really warm. Some colors I'm working with are going to be, I have a magenta and a cad orange, dioxazine purple, and yellow medium azo. So these will be my main colors, of course, white, naturally. And then I have this it's a brilliant purple, it's called, and I think it will look okay in some of those snow piles, but I think it's going to be a little more blue than that. So I also have my standby, you know, yellow, red, and blues, just in case I need to mix up some extra colors. And let's get going. All right, starting out with that background. So I have my magenta. I'm going to try to stick to these five colors plus white as much as possible. And we'll see how well that goes. So instead of red, you could use red on the background if you want to. I am not going to use red. I'm going to use magenta and orange, which arguably you could say that this is a cool red and a warm red. You could say that. You absolutely could. And you'd be right. Ooh, look at that. Vibrant. Wow. What a lovely color. Isn't that nice? I kind of like that. So all I'm going to do here is cover the entire background with this color. And that's going to set my tone for the entire painting. And then once this is on there, I'll let it dry, you know, as much as, <laughs> as, much as my patience will allow. And uh, then move on to the rest of the painting. If you're here catching this live, say hi. Ask questions if you want to. When I'm doing backgrounds, especially two color backgrounds, I like to kind of painterly like swish the colors just in case any of it shows through. And sometimes the texture will show through even if the paint color does not. And it just helps it to feel a little more painterly. Plus, it kind of loosens you up for the rest of the painting. And this is a really pretty loose painting. I mean, here, it's kind of tight, but we're going to loosen it up a little bit. We're going to make it a little more fun, a little more, uh, well, a little abstract. A little abstract, a lot of abstract. Let's see, impressionist. We're going to make it impressionist. Also, the bigger brush you use, the faster this part goes. This painting is going to go into the Creatively Uncorked members library. That's going to be found at Creatively Uncorked. Well, creativelyuncorked.com, sure, but it's also going to be at members.creativelyuncorked.com. That's where the actual membership site is. So this will be a tutorial with, um, with video, with maybe written instructions, I don't know, maybe just video instructions. And photo reference downloads, you know, all that. Plus a couple of hundred other videos that you would also have access to.
I think this would be a great painting that could be done in all sorts of different mediums. Just using acrylic today. Okay, more paint. So we're mixing light red and cool red, or should I say warm red and cool red? Warm red and cool red. And you'd think it would turn red, but it doesn't. It does turn beautiful though. Background scribbled on. And if you are painting along at home and you're painting on a canvas like this, if you want to, if you're going to hang this on a wall without a frame, you can wrap your painting right around the edges and just paint that same background color just on all four sides. Okay, all right. Good job, me. We're done. <laughs> okay, so now this is the tricky part. Uh, it's being patient. Okay, is that enough of that? Good. I'm, I'm not very good at being patient. So I'm just going to get the rest of my colors ready. Let's see, I'll set this up here in case you want to take a look at the reference again. I'll just set it right there. I'm pouring some paint. So we've got our nice warm background. Putting out some new colors on the palette. So I've got some white, a nice cool yellow. This is uh, the yellow Ozzo. And then I've got another orange. This is the, it's a CAD free orange, which I've been calling my warm red. And let's see. Might be too soon to take out that brilliant purple, but that's okay. I just love that color. It's so fun. And then here's the dioxazine. So now I think this is too, a lot of orange, a lot of purple. And I may want to direct these colors a little more toward blue. So I'm just going to take out my trusty Thalo Blue. And just add a dot of it to the palette. All right. Back to it. Is it dry? Oh, yep. Looks good. <laughs> Okay, just kidding. So to tell if your painting's dry, you just tip it in the light. If it's shiny, then your paint is still wet. Uh, but, you know, I'm not made out of patience, so I'm just gonna go ahead. All right, reference photo nearby. Let's see if I can get this closer into the view. That's a little better. Okay. Rinsing out that brush. And we're gonna start with the background. We have our sun right up in here and we're gonna have our horizon line about one third of the way down. So I will take a little blue, a little purple. Heck, a little bit of that brilliant purple too. And I'll just go ahead and add in the horizon line. About one third the way down. And there are going to be some mountains. So we'll just kind of block in some mountains. This is just kind of be a reminder of where they're going to go. We can't do a lot of blending yet. I can't <laughs> because I wasn't patient and waiting for it to dry. But I just really want reminders of where everything needs to go right now. Okay, my sun. I'm just taking a tiny little dot of that yellow and mostly white. I'll just put the sun on right there and leave it there for now. Got a little drop of water on my page. Better get that soaked up for it does something bad. Okay. So there's my sun and now in my sky. I 
I can start at the top and work my way down. This is going to be a little bit of pinkish at the top, and it's going to, there's a streak of orange, and then it goes into, fades into yellow toward the horizon. So I'm starting with white. <laughs> Seems counterintuitive, right? My background is wet, so I know it's going to blend in. This will be my pink sky. Is that pink enough? Okay, getting into a little bit of orange right below the pink. And the background is starting to dry slightly, so I'm trying to move a little bit faster. Maybe even add a touch of water into the paint. And here we get into the more yellow background. So I'll go yellow white. There, I'll try to define these mountains a little bit more clearly. And I'll be bringing some purple over that to redefine them. Okay, sky's looking okay. We will need to brighten that up later. That's just fine. Remember where my sun is, okay. So we've got the purple mountains, which I'll leave alone for now. And let's kind of define where some of our light areas are going to be. So I'll take white and yellow. Okay, so I'll have trees. But the brightest spot is going to be, this is, there's going to be a tree right here, tree trunk. Okay, and then the shadow of that tree trunk is going to be coming like right down here because the shadow always goes away from the sun, so that'll go this way. So in the meantime, the sunshine is going to go this way. So I just want to add some lighter areas. And I am picking up a little bit of this background, so I'll just stop every once in a while, clean the brush, pick up more paint. Again, just defining my light area. So aside from the sun, this will be the brightest area on the painting. Okay, we're also going to have a little bit of white up in this area. There's going to be this pine tree here. So then we've got the light coming out behind it. Okay. All right, I'm going to be patient with this and let's add in some trees. Well, Maybe this is where I actually need to be patient with it <laughs> and let this background dry a little while. Okay, let's do that. I'm going to take a short break and blow dry this. And uh, if you're painting along, you can hit your pause button, come back when you're ready. See you soon.
And we are back. So I'm going to switch brushes to this uh, square brush, which holds a little bit more paint and uh, covers ground a little bit more thoroughly. So background is dry, mostly dry, dry enough. And here we go. So I'm going to get my mountains in there. And that's a really blue blue, so I just added a touch of orange to that blue just to kill it down a little. A little white, because it's really, really dark. Okay, and I'm kind of trying to match that background color in there. So maybe a little more blue, but not too dark. Yeah, somewhere in there, okay. Even with this uh, purpley blue dulled down, it still looks pretty bright, doesn't it? I can dull it down with a little bit more orange or... I'm just working with my starting background color here. Just gonna get some nice jagged shapes in there. More blue. You don't want to make the mistake of having all of your colors, your whole area of color being exactly the same shade. Mix it up a little. Maybe some more purpley blue over here, maybe some bluey blue over there. Maybe throw in some dirty orange to darken it somewhere else. And the more of this background that shows through right now, actually, the duller your color will look. Um, so that's not a bad thing. Because no matter what, these colors are going to look vibrant. So I'm just tipping my brush in the water occasionally here. If the paint feels a little too dry, if it doesn't feel like it's flowing smoothly, then I'll just grab a little bit of water, mix it in with the paint. Okay, now I've got that bluish, purplish. Add a little more whitish. And I can add a little bit here into the background. Touch more water. I'm using this bigger brush so that it holds more water and holds more paint. Because we're basically just going to paint this sucker right in there. Just lay that paint down and let it be. So I've got purple. I'm gonna, I'll be coming back up here with some more yellow. What happens when you mix purple and yellow? That's right, ugly. It turns sort of brown. I mean, it can be good depending on what you're painting, but mostly it's ugly. Okay. Okay, I don't want to get too involved with this before I get my trees in. But I kind of do. Here's my darkers, my uh, dark shadowy snow. I know where the trees are going to go, so I'm keeping an eye on this to know that, and then just coming in here and putting my colors in anyway. a bit. This is snow after all. I mean, it's a shadow of snow, but it's still snow. And I like how these variations are coming about. So we've got some dark purple, light purple, wider brush strokes, thinner brush strokes, somewhere more gray. Keep it kind of even down here, being the least amount of light touching it. 
you know, because the sun's so far away. <laughs> Keeping some darker darks over here. So basically what I'm doing now is I'm keeping an eye on where my darks are, where my lights are, and just putting the blobs of color where the color goes. Simple as that. So this isn't going to come out looking like this. We've already discussed that this is actually going to be more of an impressionistic painting. So it's going to be color, color and light. Uh, that's going to be an impression of a tree. <laughs> with a sunset, uh, but that's not exactly what you're going to see. Okay, and then we'll bring in some more white. When you're transitioning from, say, a blue to an orange or a purple to an orange. You can go straight to, from one color to the other if you want to. Generally a less harsh way of doing that is to go to red first, or in this case magenta. And my magenta again is just my cool red. Don't want it to get too dark though. Keep mixing some white in there. If ever you get just too much paint on your brush, just quit. Just rinse it out, start over. It's perfectly fine to do that. And it's actually a good idea. Okay, I'm keeping bright colors. There. A few more brights kind of a transition in here where it goes from yellow to purple. So I want to keep those magentas in between because yellow and purple turns ugly. But we can dull that down or we can avoid it just by putting magentas in between color. <laughs> so what do you think? Is it starting to look like snow? This is one of those paintings that's going to have a really long, ugly stage, and then it'll all come together at the end. <laughs> that's the plan. <laughs> a little more red down in here. Magenta, I mean. So that cool red is my magenta. Blends nicely with the blues, the purples, and the oranges. Okay, so how are we doing here? I've got a little bit more purple down in here I gotta bring out. And you can see I am leaving some of the background color showing through. touch that too much. I want more yellow there. Okay, I'm going to let this dry a little bit and let's mix up some nice dark tree color. Get those tree trunks in. And I want to start with the tree trunks right here. This is going to be where the most change happens is right there on that sun. So, now, let's see, I'll put that brush in the water for a second, pick up the other one, and I'm only changing brushes right now just so I can uh, have a clean brush to start with. Okay, so now I want some more orange, a little more red. 
Okay, here we go. So now when these branches are coming out of that tree, they're glowing where they hit the sun. Or when the sun hits them. Yeah, maybe that's it. Okay, so I'm just trying to add the glow to the branches that aren't there yet. This will show up though. Okay, get my branches glowing. And then maybe even a little more. Well, I'll get that brighter. I'll get that brighter eventually. I don't need to do everything in one step. Okay, so let's go back to that tree. Oops, that was an ugly color. And if ever you mix a color you don't like, get rid of it. Get it off your palette. Because if you don't get it off your palette, you might accidentally stick your brush in it and use it on something. There. Okay. So I'm going to take that blue and some yellow because, yeah, those trees back there actually are <laughs> kind of green, but then I'm adding red. Okay. Okay, my paint is pretty thin here. I think I'll take a little bit more red, a little more orange. Just mixing well so it doesn't turn into mud. It's starting to get mud anyway, so I'll stop, rinse. All right, the trees are going to be going back to a little bit more purple. with magenta. And yes, I totally could have practiced this first and had all my colors figured out before starting, but you know what? I know how you guys love to see me fail, <laughs> or at least make mistakes and then fix them. So here we go, we're doing this together. Another one. Like Bob Ross always says, you got to give your trees friends. So I've got that magenta on there, and then I'm just coming back with a little bit of blue over it. Not filling it all in. Okay, I want to get this top of the tree up here to match a little bit. All right. Back to, let's see, I want to get that glow around that tree. So we're going to have to add some brighter, brighter colors. I will take a little bit of yellow. Heck, I'm even going to take just a straight orange here. I mean, what good is cat orange unless you're using it straight? Okay, I'm sure it's plenty good <laughs> for probably a lot of things. But if you want real punch on something, cat orange or cat red light, just straight out of the tube. Pow. That is a powerful color. Okay. That's getting nice and bright. Now I want to kind of darken the area around it. Got another branch hanging down here. It's not quite as bright, not as brightly lit. And 
and I don't think I want to mess with those trees too much more. But as long as I've got this orange out, <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit more orange to the second tree too. We aren't going to have as much glow on the second tree, but just a couple of little highlights here and there. Okay, so two of those trees are looking ready to go. Now I'm going to take another tree right over here. Let's see. I'll start with more of a pinky purple this time. It's going to be right about here. Just chopping in some branches. And I'm starting at the bottom of the tree on this one. I don't know why. Just because I am. That was a good answer, wasn't it? <laughs> I'll be here all night. <laughs> I don't want to fill the whole thing in solid because I've got that glorious cat orange. Oof, beautiful color. I want to add some of that in here. All right, now let's go some orange. So I've got my basic dark color in there. Now I'm gonna give it some sass. Actually, I'm gonna rinse this brush. There we go. Take a little bit of that lovely orange. Okay, that's enough. I don't want to go overboard with the orange. So where are we at? How's this looking? I know I need some work. Actually, how about that sky? Let's finish the sky and then basically work our way down. Doing all of our touch-ups as we go. So this is my pink sky. I'm trying to keep my paint fairly thick at this point, as in not mixing too much water in it. Got a little darker. Not that I'm mad at it for being dark, but that is not the color I started with. I don't mind it though. Here, look. That looks pretty good, actually. Make sure I get that across the whole sky. Brighten it up. Okay, and as we're working our way down, we'll be adding a little bit more yellow. So kind of cleaning out that brush a little, going with some white, some yellow. That might be a little too yellow, but maybe not. Okay, we've got a bright, powerful sun, and then I can darken that a little bit. around the sun. So it's I'm actually getting to be a little bit more orange right now. That's okay. 
making the sky slightly darker than what you see here, just to make sure that sun pops. It's looking like it's glowing now. A little yellow, a little orange. Just coming close, kind of around the trees, up to the trees, up to the mountains. Keeping the paint thick. See what I tell you, it's going to look pretty ugly for most of the painting and then all of a sudden it'll just come together. And if you haven't left enough branches in your trees, go ahead and cut them out now. You can use your light paint to kind of cut into your trees. Cut that sky right back in. Darken it up over here on the outsides. So when you start to get layers and layers of color like this, then it gets to be just really fun to work with. Just watching all these different colors blend and mix. It's pretty fun. Pretty, uh, pretty satisfying and relaxing. To me, anyway. <laughs> Boy, that is looking like a... Mighty wintry sky now, isn't it? Let's see if we can get some sky holes in this tree. And maybe we need some over here too. So my goal with this at this point is to, to start at the top, work my way down and finish, complete the painting as I go. So every time that I go past an area of the painting. I'm not going back to it. That's the plan. I'm not going to touch it. It's going to be done once I'm done with it. <laughs> well, I guess kind of everything works that way, but anyway. All right. I'm going to let that go before I go too overboard at it. All right. I'll grab a new paper towel. Okay, so the trees might still need a little work, do still need a little work. Like I was doing in here, I was cutting back into the trees. I can do that down here as well. I just have to make sure I'm using this mountain color as the tree hole color. So my mountain color, I think was pretty easy to mix. Some blues, some purples, maybe some reds. Definitely some white. Very scientific. You just stir everything together until you see something you like. Trying to get some of these light colors on the mountain because there are going to be some highlights coming on here from, from that sunset. little bit darker. Let's 
see. I might be able to add a little bit more magenta to that. Maybe even a little more dioxazine purple. Put that color on my plate, but I keep forgetting about it. It's not a color I use often, so it's hard to remember it's there. There we go. That's what I'm talking about when I say cut into the trees. See, now it's looking like we have a few more, more interesting branches. More red, or more magenta. There we go. That's nice, it kind of offsets the other purple that's back there. And I'll post a link below once this video is all done um, to show you, you know, in case you want to use these exact same colors. Otherwise, these are just convenience colors and you can mix them all yourself if you want to with just red, yellow, blue, and white. It's going to take you a little longer, be a little more challenging, but, you know, that's half the fun. Okay, clean that brush off a little and get a lot more white. Not that much, a little less white. Okay, tops of my mountains, I want to be a little bit lighter. That's enough. <laughs> Not too light. All right. Just gonna add some chunks of color back there if I start to get too detailed, because I don't wanna get too detailed. This is an impressionist painting, not a realistic painting. Okay, so I'm, we'll stop there. Let's see, mountains, I'm going to let that go, mostly. I like that magenta. The magenta seems to go with everything. I'm trying to redefine the horizon line back there, but I don't want it too dark but I want it darker than that. <laughs> okay, I guess I just gotta let it go. All right, it's dark enough, moving on. Take a light color here. In this case, it's going to be a light purple because that's handy. Just going to redefine some of the areas in the background where I have where the where the ground meets the sky or the ground meets um, the mountains. Okay, so now the snow, I do kind of, I still want to start at the top and continue working my way down and complete as I go. That is still the goal. And no, I don't want to switch to a smaller brush. A little more magenta. Here. So we made that second tree and then never uh, completed the shadow for it. So that would be a good thing to do right now. It's too dark.
Okay. I think I can get some more darks over here. Where this tree's shadow is. That's pretty dark. Let's lighten it up. Might need to get out some more white. Lighten it up as we get off toward the corner here. I know this is all in shadow, but I think it can still be a little bit lighter. There, I don't want to touch that too much more because... Done. Wait. <laughs> now done. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I'm going to have to get a new plate, I think. I'll just grab this one. All right, so I'm looking for my yellows and whites. So I'll go with that nice bright yellow again, the yellow azo. And if you don't have yellow azo, any cool yellow will do. Hi, Carol. Thank you. This one's actually pretty fun. It's a lot more interesting than it looks. <laughs> it's a big mess throughout most of the painting. Um, but if you can get past the ugly part, I like how it's coming together now. Okay. Rinse that brush one more time. All right, and I'm going to take those brights. Yellow and white. A little more white. It doesn't need to be that yellow. Okay, and again, reinforce my brightest parts. I will come back again with even a lighter color because I want my whites to just really pow. Just really, really make an impact. Okay, I'm going to stop messing with the trees. For real. Moving on. Okay, so we might have some, like, hills in the snow. What we do, we have these little hills all over in the snow, but I'm not going to... <laughs> I'm not going to do all those. Um, but it might be lighter, it might be darker. And just some areas in the snow here. Okay. Oh. Can't do too much there. That's still pretty wet. And yellow and purple turn ugly, so I'm just going to ignore that for now. Go back to that beautiful orange. And yellow. <laughs> Beautiful orange, yellow, and white. Is that too orange? Maybe. I like it. I'll keep it. This is my painting. I'll do what I want. That's a good thing to say, by the way. This is my painting. I'll do what I want. Live it. Learn it. Love it. You're welcome.
All right, I want to take that color a little bit further. off here at some point. So again my in-between color between that purple and the orange is going to be the magenta. And I'll take some of that magenta up here as well. A little more another plate full of it <laughs> so I can just use as much as I want. Okay, I'm gonna gent up in here and again as a tr transition color here between the orange and the purple. Ooh, I kind of like that. Wow, it's almost like getting the background color back. Ooh, pretty. This type of painting where you can just kind of put, put what color where you want it. Oh, just so much fun. Okay, what do you think of that snow? I think, let's see. I'm going to add a little bit more color. Actually, I'm going to add a punch of white. So I did say I was going to come back and add those whites in there. So let's punch this up. Pow. Impact. This is our impact area. We've got that bright, bright, bright sun. And we've got all those bright reflections. Bright snow. Yeah, now this is just plain white. If it picks up under color, fine. If not, that's fine too. is nice and bright. I'm liking the brightness of that white. If you do pick up too much of the undercolor, just wipe off your brush and a paper towel. Start over, pick up some fresh paint. Okay, I think that's enough of the brightest bright white. Um, what else? I think I want to kind of, well, not really smooth out the area, but smooth out the area. <laughs> How do I smooth out this color without? Anyway, let's just give it a try. Take a little more, let's see. Oh yeah, that worked pretty well. Got a little bit of orange on the brush. Gorgeous. Love that orange. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a, take a break, take a look. Is there anything here? Get rid of that reference photo, we're done with that. So let's see, this tree, hmm. Maybe. Maybe I want to do some touch-ups in that tree. I don't want to do too much to it because it's just a background. I mean, it's not the main focal point, so... Just a little bit of variation here and there. I suppose it's too late to make it stand upright, but... I can live with that. Let's 
Okay, enough. Leave it alone. How about this background, though? This area I really like a lot. I wonder if I could do that over here. Or if I would just end up going overboard. Well, let's find out. Okay, I guess it isn't adding that much more interest to it, so probably better quit that. And we are almost at an hour now, so I probably better quit this too. <laughs> okay, well thanks for painting along. My name is Shanna Kramer, and this is Creatively Uncorked. You are welcome to join us here on YouTube, or you can join us as a Creatively Uncorked member. Check out members.creativelyuncorked.com. And there will be a new painting every week, and there are already hundreds of paintings in the membership. Thanks for painting along, and I'll see you next week.